plates falling out of cupboards when there's been no one in the kitchen. Hey there, Carl. Yep, I'm here. Yeah, I'm not getting any aberrations at all from any of my readings in this room, so I might get you to head back to the cemetery and back down to Alex McFarlane's grave and let's see if he's not down there. What? The cemetery? Did you say the cemetery? <laughs> Honestly, feels like I'm stuck somewhere in the middle of the Blair Witch Project. I'm scared out of my brain as well. What on earth? Oh my God. He's a really old one here. I can't even read the name. It's got a ripped up tiger. That's pretty sinister. Oh my God. Oh, you gave me such a fright. Are you OK? No. <laughs> Let's give you a fright. Look at that over there. What is it? Is that? Hello, Carolyn. Have you located the grave of Alexander McFarlane yet? No, I'm just looking for that now. I've got Michael with me. Thank goodness. Oh, cool, because I lost radio contact with him a little while ago. I need you both to locate his grave and take as many photographs as you can. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm looking at the map. It should be about halfway up the hill that you're currently standing on. I've set up quite a few thermometers around the cemetery and I'm getting an inexplicable temperature drop around about his gravestone. I think this might be it. Alexander. That's him. There he is. Yeah, I might just take a photo. Perfect. Should we um, head back up to the van and see if um, Brad's got anything worth looking at? Yeah. Interesting night, a full moon in the cemetery. It all bodes well, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. oh. Michael, tell me about when you were down in the, the Spanish influenza area in the murderer's row. You're standing on top of, was it 1,600 uh, bodies, victims, whatever, and it's, it's you know, just quite horrid mm. to be standing there. But Yeah. And you took this photo when you were down there, which just came up with so many <gasps> orbs. Oh. It's wow. quite remarkable. <laughs> it's like clusters of them. It's such a high intensity of orbs together. What does that kind of suggest? That you're standing on 1,600 dead people and they've come up to visit. It's just amazing to get that many in an area where there were so many people that were buried. Yeah. Mm. It's quite remarkable. The other photo that you took is another orb photograph. Oh. Is this one on the left-hand side? A blue orb. A blue orb. And by just lifting the, the light, the contrast, the orb actually goes a bright blue. I can't explain that at all. Now, I have to blow my own horn for a little bit because, for once, I managed to get a good photo. I think this will be the spot where I'm going to get most EMF fluctuations and, and temperature drops and all that sort of thing. So, I'm just trying to find a good spot. Spot to... to do it. <laughs> I'm hearing things already. Just trying to find a good spot to do it. Might come up here. Well, I just took some photographs on the spur of the moment. And that was a photograph that I took. These two here are, are tombstones. And then this odd figure in the middle, which kind of looks like a guy wearing a hat, if I could be so bold. Right. So, Stephanie, it's an, and it's not a tombstone. Well, that's what I was thinking. As it turns out, Earlier on, when I go down and I take photographs and do a recce, if you like, of trying to figure out where I'm going to put all the different equipment, that was the photo that I took because I knew that's where I was going to place the, the tri-field meter. And there's just nothing in there that would indicate that it would be another tombstone. Okay. So I can't figure out what this figure is that seems to be rising up from the ground. Do you think it could be, if I can pose the question, that might be 
say, the ghost of Alexander McFarlane? It could well be. It was down in the area of his grave. And why he'd be down there, I would have thought he'd be up on the platform. Mm, well, that's where, where his you tragedy went. occurred. And we'll go through a couple of things that did happen on the platform while you were up there. When you walked in, the alarm went off. Yeah, that was weird. It was weird. And I'm going to show you this. Now, the alarm is right next to the door there. If you were to put the alarm on, it would automatically set itself. Now, there's no one there. And then suddenly, that is the alarm setting itself. There was no one around, and we actually got it on tape. The alarm just turning itself on. <laughs> now, when you're inside, when you walk out of the kitchen, you can see your shadow disappears. Yes. And watch the window in the background on the right-hand side. It might have just been a person. But this is the wide shot, and there's no there's no person that walks past because there's a camera that's right there. And then I also have this camera, which is pointing straight at that window. And you'll see your torch shine inside, yeah, so that's you inside. And then you go out of the room, and there's nothing. I would have assumed if a person walked past, they would have to walk in between the camera and the window. It looks very transparent, though. It does, it does look, look very like transparent. A solid form. How strange. But I yeah, didn't like the kitchen, though. I really didn't like the kitchen. I remember saying just shining my torch even through the windows was quite disconcerting because I half expected to see a face through the window. Well, that's what we got. Well, I'm glad I didn't see it at the time. Uh, I was like sort of. Left. I ran it like a screaming girl. I would have thought that Waikumiti Cemetery would be a very calm place because it's where people are at rest, but I think we've proved otherwise and maybe even found the spirit of Mr Alexander McFarlane. I cannot believe the figure going past the window and I just thank God that I didn't see it when I was in there. It would have been so scary. But the kitchen is where a lot of things happen in that place, so I'm not surprised it was that window. When I saw the footage, I was really taken aback. I was quite surprised that there was so much evidence there. When it happens to you, it's a strange feeling to hear noises and to feel yourself a bit freaked out. Maybe I shouldn't uh, get too upset when the others feel like that when they're inside and I shouldn't give them too much grief now that it's happened to me.